I got a surprisingly good night of sleep last night. And the reason I say surprisingly is because I'm a shift worker, so I work early and late shifts. And this week, I'm starting my late week where I've got six late shifts over the next seven days, which is as much of a slog as it sounds. And obviously the week before was mostly early shifts. So usually when I shift, or when I switch from early to late, those first couple of days, I don't get the best night of sleep because obviously my body's trying to adjust to this new sleeping window shift by about four hours difference, which is pretty significant if you know anything about sleep or if you've been a shift worker before or if you're currently a shift worker like me. So usually I only get like six, maybe seven hours of sleep. But last night, got to bed at about midnight and woke up at eight on the dot. So pretty satisfying duration. Felt well rested when I woke up, which is obviously the most important indicator of whether you had a good night's sleep or not. But yeah, it feels good to get that behind me and hopefully going to continue to keep getting good nights of sleep throughout the rest of this week. Anyway, I weighed in at 81.8 kg first thing this morning. So here's how my physique is looking at the moment. Obviously going to be training back and biceps today. So I'll show you how my back is looking before any kind of pump is achieved without any mills in my system, no fluids or anything like that. And you might have been wondering, 81.8 kg, that's quite a big drop off since yesterday. I mean, that's half a kilo difference. I think I finally figured out some of the scenarios where these fluctuations and mainly these dips in weight occur. And it's probably due to the fact that I'm switching from an early shift to a late shift. Therefore, I was awake for longer yesterday. I probably stopped drinking fluids at the same time that I usually do. So therefore, I went longer without drinking fluids. So I was more dehydrated. So all of that weight is probably just water weight from simply being what 13 hours without fluids rather than nine or 10, which can make a pretty big difference. So I expect my weight to settle a bit more throughout the rest of the week. And yeah, that's something I've been wondering for a while, like what are the exact causes for it? Because obviously your water weight and your glycogen stores are responsible for a lot of the fluctuations you see. But there's specific scenarios like that where you can kind of piece it together and go, oh yeah, that, make, that makes sense. So without further ado, let's go and get some breakfast. So here are the supplements I'm currently taking on a daily basis. I have two squares of the 100% dark chocolate first thing in the morning alongside one multivitamin and an omega-3 fish oil along with some electrolytes mixed into my water. And then I'll have three omega-3 fish oils throughout the day, one with each of my meals. So for my first meal of the day, I've got some scrambled eggs with avocado. Then I've got some porridge oats with banana, apple and cinnamon. I kicked off the back portion of my session with some wide grip weighted pull-ups. I was of course using my lifting straps to eliminate my grip and forearm out of the equation so that I could better isolate my lats. And I had a five kilo plate around my waist. So same weight as I did in my last session. And once again, managed eight reps in this first set that you've just watched. And in my second set, I managed to hit seven reps, which is a one rep improvement on last session. And my ultimate goal before I progress in weight on this exercise is to get eight reps on each set with the weight. So if in my next session, I'm able to improve this second set by a further rep, then the session after that, I'll be able to move up to 6.25 kg as I like to keep the progression curve with my pull-ups slow and steady because obviously it's a body weight movement and therefore it's much harder to make big jumps in the weight that you're incrementing by. Similar to the last exercise, I then switched to the neutral grip position, still using my lifting straps and still with five kg on my waist. I once again managed eight reps which was equal to what I managed on this exercise in my last session. Then I moved over to perform the barbell row. However, I took a slightly different approach to usual, starting with the barbell on the floor 
and then lifting it up to my knees before doing my rows. This was in an attempt to be in a bit more of a bent over position whilst performing the row as this better targets your upper back and it's still a technique that I'm working to improve. So as a result of this, I actually got less reps on these sets than I did in my last session, only managing six reps on each set. But since my form did improve fairly significantly, I'm okay with that and this is a long-term game. I've got to make sure that I'm performing the exercises correctly to get the most out of them. Then I moved on to perform some body weight chin-ups for my biceps. Now, as you can probably see at the start of this set, I was swinging around quite a bit and using momentum. So halfway through the set, I adjusted by allowing my feet to touch the floor just to kill the momentum, not to cheat the reps or anything like that, but just so that I wasn't swinging around using my men's momentum to get more reps than I'm actually able to get with good technique. Then to finish off my biceps, I did a set of easy bar curls. Now you might be wondering what happened to the dumbbells. Well, I decided to switch over to the easy bar curl mainly because it's easier to progressive overload as you can increase by two and a half kilo increments each time rather than two and a half kilos on each side each time like you can only do with dumbbells. So I feel like I'll be able to better progressively overload this movement and therefore it will be more beneficial to my bicep development. I was trying to use as strict form as possible on these with 30 kilos on the bar, including the bar, and I managed to get nine reps. Then it was time to head to the changing rooms to check out the pump, which was looking pretty impressive, if I do say so myself, really enjoying my lat and bicep development at the moment, and really having a lot of fun in these sessions, really focused in on improving that technique, whilst also making really nice progress on my pull-ups, which is something I'm really proud of because when I first started my fitness journey, I couldn't even do one pull-up body weighted. Now to be able to do eight or more with five kilos on my waist just feels like such huge progress in terms of my lat strength and also in terms of my fat loss journey. Anyway, you can pause the video here if you wanna check out my sets, reps and weights lifted throughout the session if you're interested in that. Then for my post-workout meal, I've got some beef with veggies and baked potatoes. Now it's time for my commute to work on my electric bike. Should be about three miles covered in total here. Obviously, some of it is assisted, but you still do have to do quite a lot of pedaling. So it ends up being some pretty good cardio, about 40 minutes in total, three miles each way. So that's six miles total cycled. So yeah, pretty decent cardio and much more efficient than walking it. Then I've got some chicken breast with veggies and baked potatoes. Then I've got some Greek yogurt with creatine, protein powder, apple and blueberries. Then to finish up my eating for the day, I treated myself to a grenade protein bar. And here are my calories and macros for the day. Hopefully I will see you tomorrow for a shoulder session. Cheers.